Welcome back to the channel, guys. Thank you for stopping by and saying hello. If you've never watched one of my videos before, my name is Chris. I'm a faith-based content creator. I do vlogs and ministry videos on this channel. I call these fireside faith chats, faith talks. We'll get a fireplace one day, God willing. So if you like this type of content, definitely subscribe. Check out my other videos, river surfing, all sorts of fun things, doing some mountain biking with my trail pup, etc. But let's dive right on into what the Lord's been sharing with me that I want to share with you. So a lot of these talks, I take notes down at church. This is my bulletin with my little note section on the back. And I just write things down in my last talk. I had some notes and I just kind of cross those off and then kind of place some things. And so I like to have notes so I kind of have a, an idea of what I want to talk about. And what I want these talks to be is I want them to be encouraging. I want to encourage you with your walk in the Lord, because I watch other faith-based content creators. I'm really encouraged by their words. Now, with that said, a little caveat is do be careful because there's so many words out there right now. You can just start like popping on to a like, oh man, I just like need this, need this. I need to hear about like meeting my spouse next month. So do be careful, pray into every word because not every word someone talks about is specifically for you. What I like to talk about is a little bit different than that unless the Lord specifically says something to me. But I just talk about my life and I'm just hopefully with my life and the walk that I've done with the Lord and have doing and, and have been and on the, the journey, God willing, many more years if he tarries, then I want to grow. I want to grow. I don't want to be stagnant in my walk. And so first and foremost, whatever life point you're at right now, whether you're just kind of cruising and it seems like it's neutral, it seems like the days are kind of just, one's kind of rolling into the next before you know it. Sunday's here, it's time to go to church and then it's time to go back to work, time to feed the family, time to go to Costco, whether it's mundane, neutral, so to speak, and every day is a blessing of the Lord, but you guys know what I'm talking about, where some days can just kind of flow, some weeks can flow where there's not really excitement, there's nothing bad, praise the Lord, either, but it's just kind of like cruising. You could be on a hilltop, you could be on a mountaintop, singing Psalm 126 over your life right now, where you wept and you sowed in tears, and now you're going home with your sheaves the Lord is blessing. Or you could be going through a time of hardship. Whatever time you're going through, I just want to share with you the stillness of the Lord and what happened the other night. So in Colorado, we have a thing called river surfing. I live in Colorado. That's where I am right now. I was born and raised in Southern California. My whole family's out here now. It was a little bit of an interesting transition. First couple winters, I was like, get me out of here. I want to go back to California. Summertime right now, as I'm filming this, it's absolutely beautiful. I will take a Colorado summer over a California summer any day of the week. But once it starts getting a little chilly, besides skiing and snowboarding, eh, I wouldn't mind going back to California. Just to be honest. So we have this thing called river surfing in Colorado. There's a wave. You can look it up online. I have my own vlog videos about this. But there's a wave in Salida, Colorado. There's a wave now in Pueblo, Colorado. There's a wave in Denver, Colorado. And if you've ever seen like footage of surfing videos, like when the Waimea Bay, they dig it out. And it's just a stand-up wave. It's not a flow rider, but it's a stand-up green face wave. Check out my videos. If you're totally curious, I have like two videos I literally just posted like right before this. So if you just click on my channel, go on my video section, it's like the one or two right before this video comes out. And those are my vlogging videos. I'll talk more about this in other videos, but the Lord is transitioning me right now. And again, I'll go into that more with more of these talks later down the road. But that right now is not for this message. But in this transition, is giving me a little bit more free time. And I'm choosing to do this as well. So I went by myself down to the river wave. And typically I don't like to do this kind of action sport by myself. You're dealing with water and rocks underneath the water. It's not dangerous, but I wear a helmet, life vest. You don't want to be out there alone. You definitely want people around observing you because after you wipe out off the wave, if you watch my video, you'll totally understand. You just, you go through like a little rapid section. It's not bad. It's nothing to be scared about, but I feel more comfortable with a life vest, a helmet on, as do most everyone there. But I also like to have some spotters keeping an eye on you as well. So I went down there alone knowing that probably this evening, it was later, it was about 5.30 p.m. by the time I got down here. 
It stays light right now in summertime till about 8.45, maybe 8.40. And then it's like too hard to see and you shouldn't be in the water. So I got down there. There were probably like seven people. It was actually more than I anticipated. But then after like the first 50 minutes, like most of those people left. And then one other guy showed up and there was just three of us. And it was beautiful. Normally you wait on the edge for your turn to go. And if you don't have a really long ride, if you're not that good, you kind of go fast and you got to wait back in line for like another eight minutes, 10 minutes if the lines are long. And it's like, oh man, this is kind of, you know, I'm not really getting that workout in. But when there's only a couple of you, you're literally doing laps like a Labrador. You're just burning yourself out and my body needs those kind of workouts. Just literally after you're done, you just know you're cooked. You feel so good driving home. You come home and you stretch. You get your good food in you. So where I'm going with this was it starts to get kind of that like 7.30. And it's not a really bright day. There's some clouds in the sky. The rain is holding. Praise the Lord. He's blessed that. And there was just this stillness. Because the clouds were out a little bit, there wasn't too many people walking. This is a new wave in Pueblo, Colorado, and it's on a really nice section of this river walk. It's not completed fully yet, but it's beautiful. And there's like some trees with some rocks and what's called an eddy, right? So when you wipe out of the wave, you get caught up either on both sides. If you're goofy foot, you go this side. If you're regular foot, you go this side. And you paddle over to the edge, and then this current just flows you down to the rock where you, then you jump over and get back over to the wave. And I was just in that little section where I just paddled a couple times and I just sat on my board and I'm just floating slowly back to the rock where I'm going to jump off of and get back in line. Actually, there was no line on my side. Two on that side, just me on the other side. And there was this stillness. You could hear the bugs, the little, you know, if you're from a bug area, not like mosquitoes or anything. There can be mosquitoes there, but like nothing hindering anything. Just picture that like little chirp, maybe a frog. I don't know what's going on, but just the stillness and the light, that light of twilight as it starts to get dark. I love that time of day and that stillness. And all I could say was, thank you, Lord. Now off camera, when I'm not recording this, yeah, there's been a lot going on in my life. There's like the Lord's promise things. I'm waiting for those promises to be fulfilled. He's teaching me how to wait patiently. I left California. Watch my other videos, kind of why I left California. That goes into more detail. But through all the downs in life, I guess you could say, there's so many things to be thankful for. And what I do, and I think I've talked about this on another video, I wake up every day on this side right here. My pup is on this side. I wake up and I thank the Lord for a bed to sleep on. I thank the Lord for sheets and a roof over my head and a clean remodeled room. The rest of the house, that half of the house, not so much, but my kitchen area, bathroom, mudroom, and this room are, are finished and it's clean. It's, it's nice to wake up to. It's nice to look out the window and see the sun coming in. I thank the Lord for my umbrella. I found dumpster diving that it can cover me from the shade. I thank the Lord for my dog. I thank the Lord that I can get out of bed and do a prayer walk every morning. I thank the Lord for my family and friends and river surfing. There's always gratitude. That will get you out of a funk if you're in a funk. You start praising the Lord, having a gratitude journal. Write down five things that you're grateful for every day. And I don't do that every day. I need to do that every day. But I always write, my relationship with the Lord. He's given me time to do devotions and I, I choose that time. I spend that time with him. My dog, health for surfing and, and my family and friends. I love that because that takes your eyes off of what, and I'm speaking to myself right here, that takes your eyes off of sometimes funks you're going through, neutrality. Because let's face it, if you're on the mountaintop, you're shouting. You're having the time of your life. If you're in the valley, it's kind of hard to get your head above water. If you're in the neutrality, you're like, Lord, like, I could use some blessings. I could use this or that. But praise the Lord. Praise the Lord every day. He's given you breath in your lungs. He hasn't called you home yet. So he has a purpose and a place for you. So that stillness was beautiful. That rest. Having joy in his creation. Not worshiping the creation, but having absolute tremendous joy. The other guys on the other side were older than me. One guy probably 20 years, one guy 10 years, and it's awesome to see that. They were stoked. 
One guy and I, we stayed an extra probably maybe 20 minutes than the other guy, and we went till dark. Like, I couldn't see the wave, my last wave, as I loaded up my GoPro. Like, I couldn't really see the wave. And I was like, oh, Lord, protect me. <laughs> but it was absolutely phenomenal. So find that outside. Get outside. Whether it's a walk around the neighborhood at twilight, early in the morning, find that peace. Because that was absolutely tremendous. Which reminds me, another time we were there, I saw a guy and he went down the rocks and I was like, oh, is he trying to raft by himself? I didn't realize he tripped. Next thing I know, I think his wife is yelling. He can't swim. I turn around. This guy is like doggy paddling and then he, he's going to the shore. I was about to jump in. And then I go and I come around. I say, you okay? And they were thinking like the saints. And I was like, okay, Lord, I, number one, in my mind, I was just like, number one, Lord, I pray for their salvation. I think they're, you know, Catholics, and I'm not saying that Catholics can't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but they were praising the saints instead of Jesus for his rescue, that he didn't drown. And I said, the Lord has the Lord has you here for a reason. Let's celebrate life. And even small interactions, just seeing how he's doing. It was a beautiful thing. The Lord has a purpose and a place for that man. So you're like, Chris, that was beautiful, but like, when are we going to get into the meat and potatoes? All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes. So I want to talk to you about gifts. Some of us know our gifts. The Lord has given me a gift of encouraging. I also believe the Lord, and I'm praying for this as well, as Paul talks about, and I believe 1 Corinthians talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying for some gifts. I'm praying for the gift of healing, and I'm praying for the gift of miracles. Well, let's just get right into it. Now, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 4. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, that's speaking in tongues, unknown languages, if you're familiar with that, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he will. So the, the Holy Spirit gives these gifts as he wills. Let's continue on, going down to verse 28. And God has appointed in the church first the apostles, second the prophets, third the teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and the various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts and I will show you still more excellent way. And then he goes into chapter 13 talking about love. Uh, let's go over to chapter 14 verses 1, starting 1. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. We'll stop right there definitely read it. But let's go back to chapter 12, verse 31. But earnestly desire the higher gifts. And so like Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, I'm desiring the gifts of healing and I'm desiring the gifts of miracles. I'm also desiring the gift of prophecy as well for encouragement to others. There's quite a bit of gifts. So you can just pray for them and seek them and ask the Holy Spirit to give you. But some of you might have the gift of teaching and you're called to be a pastor and maybe not like a full-time pastor, but maybe uh, a leader in your Bible study, your small group, you have your vocational job where you're not dependent upon the church like Paul was. Paul was a tent maker and yes, people gave him gifts to provide his needs, but then there were times where he didn't and he just worked because he didn't want to be a burden to them. I believe the Galatian people in Galatians. But I want to talk about this. This was very interesting as I dove into this. So Moses 
when the Lord wanted him to go to Pharaoh, it was, I'm not an elegant speaker. Let me give you a couple examples. Exodus chapter four. So this is after the Lord speaks and gives miraculous signs to Moses to show the people of the Israelites. Chapter four, verse 10. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or sing or blind? Is it not I the Lord. Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. So the Lord is literally telling him everything is going to be okay. I got you. I'm going to show you everything. Verse 13. But he said, oh my Lord, please send someone else. Verse 14. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses and he said, is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people and he shall be your mouth and you shall be as God to him and take in your hand this staff with which you shall do the signs. So the Lord wanted to use just Moses for this purpose. Moses, his flesh came over him in verse 13. And he said, but he said, oh my Lord, please send someone else. So is that us where the Lord's called you to be that leader of that Bible study or to start that Bible study? And ah, now God send someone else. Uh, go share the gospel with your, with your neighbor. Build rapport. Uh, encourage him. He's down right now. Go encourage him. Go encourage your friend. <sighs> Lord, can you send someone else? Kind of busy right now. Another example, chapter 6 of Exodus, verse 10. So the Lord said to Moses, go in, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But Moses said, verse 12, but Moses said to the Lord, behold, the people of Israel have not listened to me. How then shall Pharaoh listen to me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. So he's, again, he's putting, Proverbs talks about this. There's power in life in the tongue. Like, speak life over yourself. He's speaking negativity. He says, I'm an uncircumcised lips. Again, like giving another excuse, but the Lord, verse 13, spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge about the people of Israel and about king of Egypt to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Again, same chapter, verse 30, but Moses said to the Lord, behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How will Pharaoh listen to me? That's now at least the third time. There might be more, but that's three times within two chapters. In chapter four, twice in chapter six. Now here is the kicker, okay? So we're like, okay, Chris, you're like, Moses wasn't a very good speaker and the Lord wanted to use him anyway. Check this out, right? If you've ever come across this, this is gonna blow your mind here. Watch this. Check this out. Again, excuses. And I'm not saying I'm not doing it. I'm just saying I've been there. All right, Acts chapter seven. Let's start in verse 20. This is again, now New Testament. Acts chapter 7, verse 20. At this time, Moses was born, and he was beautiful in God's sight. And he was brought up for three months in his father's house. And when he was exposed, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in his words and deeds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up now. He says, I'm of uncircumcised lips. I'm not an eloquent speaker. But Luke, who writes Acts, but this is Stephen's speech. So Luke is writing about Stephen before Stephen is stoned to death. He's talking about Moses and going through the timeline. And again, verse 22, Acts 7. And Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in his words and deeds. That means he was a good speaker. He was mighty in his words. Very, very interesting. So again, what I'm getting at here is there's things that the Lord has placed on your heart. And I'm just encouraging you to build with that. Take one small step. You might not lead a church and become a pastor overnight, but you can take those small opportunities that the Lord is placing on your heart. Let me share a couple examples with you. If the Lord places someone on your heart just to be an encouraging word, to pray for them, that's another gift that I believe I've given is the power of prayer. And so sometimes I hear of people that need prayer and you might be encouraged by giving up a meal and fast for a meal and just pray fervently for them. Now also with ministry, I do want to share this because someone actually pointed this out in another video that I watched and I thought it was a very good little nugget here. So you might see someone in a leadership role. You might see someone in the church 
that maybe you've gone to for a while, maybe they've gone to a, a position of a youth pastor, uh, maybe a leader in their Bible study, things are thriving for them, maybe they're coming and sharing miraculous healing stories, and as the body of believers, we want to be with them and shout for joy. And people who are burdened, we want to be praying with them and we want to be there for them. But people in a leadership role that has been tested and tried by the Lord, and what the woman said in her video was awesome. She's like, I wouldn't want to be, like, don't be envious of that because you don't know where they've come from and the refining that has happened to get there. So let's say you're an outsider and you just see Joseph from the Bible. Joseph is literally number two. He's after Pharaoh. It's Pharaoh and after Pharaoh is Joseph. And you're like, man, I just want to be Joseph. The guy went through like 12 years of struggle bus before the Lord literally brought him out. And I don't know, I don't have the scripture right in front of me. I believe it's in the New Testament where it talks about the Lord tested Joseph's character. It says, I'm paraphrasing, but before Joseph's dreams were fulfilled, the Lord tested Joseph's character. The Lord tested Joseph's character before he brought him to number two, that high up position with the nice governor's mansion, with a nice chariot, and he was literally in jail. He was in jail the same day Pharaoh called for him. He was he was the manager of the warden, you know, the prisoners. Things were going well for him. He was probably maybe given a special meal. I don't know. I'm just assuming it's not in the Bible, but he was a manager over the jailer, the ward or the warden, saw the Lord was with him. Everything he did, just like in Potiphar's house, was blessed because the Lord was with Joseph. That's why I pray for the favor of Joseph, that everything I manage would be blessed by the Lord and the Lord would have favor in me. But his, he, he, he was on the struggle and he was literally taken from the prison to the palace in the same day. But it took a lot, it took a lot to get there. So what I'm getting at with that is don't be envious of that leader because sometimes we don't know the full story, the refining process before they got there. And you might be going through your refining process right now. I know I am before the Lord brings you into the calling he has for your life. I also encourage you to definitely journal some things that you know you're very good at with a humble heart, of course, but like just journal. Be like, you know what, Lord, you've given me like the gift of prayer. I'm an encourager. Um, I believe that I'm very uh, gifted in speaking and memorizing scripture. And, and if someone needs a verse, I can kind of go grab that verse and encourage them with it without being like, the Lord says that in verse, yes, yes, the Bible is true. I believe it 100%. But sometimes we need to kind of be in a humble state and bring the word of God in a very encouraging manner. And yes, rejoice in all circumstances. But there are some things that we go through that are very painful and the Lord will get you through and you will rejoice because of the Lord's goodness. But in someone's pain, just be sensitive is what I'm getting at if that makes sense, hopefully. Again, I believe the word of God is beautiful. It is correct. It is the word of God. It's my life source because that is how I know if anything is on or off in my life. Okay, let's go back to the word of God. But what I'm getting at is just be sensitive to someone's circumstance. That's all I'm saying. And then I just want to talk about rest as well. I'll go more into this at other times, but I really feel that rest is so, we need it. We, I, I, I need it. We're go, go, go. It's just me and my dog. And I feel like I need rest. Ever since I've been in Colorado, I've been going. The, the wheels are turning. Always something to do. Even on Sunday. Most people take their Sabbath rest on Sunday. And what do I mean by that? What we're not doing is we're not coming under the law, but we're literally making a day that is holy to the Lord. And let me give you a couple examples. And each one is different. Each person is different. Some people pursue something pleasurable. I know I do. I still river surf on a Sunday. I'm going river surfing tomorrow after church. But I dedicate Sunday to the Lord. I don't do any YouTube work. I might post a video, but it's already pre-set to post. 
I don't check investments. I don't look at analytics. I don't do the the Monday through Saturday type of work. I let that rest and I kind of recharge my soul and I give that time to the Lord. Typically, that is also when I do do a uh, beautiful cheat meal as well. Go off of the regular diet, have a slice of pizza, enjoy Sabbath rest. We need rest to be able to recharge. At least I'm t- this this is me, but I, I believe this is for everyone as well. So with that said, I'm I'm an, definitely an extrovert. I love being around my friends. I love having a great time, mountain bike rides, but I need to recharge as well. And so I believe I'm not just this extrovert. I need to be like alone as well and recharge, especially, let me give you an example. If I'm on an extended vacation for like four or five days and I'm around people all the time, I start to miss my alone Bible time with the Lord. So what I do in those circumstances is I remove myself from the group, I go outside on the patio and I just have like my own alone time. But when you're with a group, like you can't like, you don't want to be selfish. Like, no, we can't do anything until I'm done with my Bible time. So what I do is I have my breakfast, you know, and I'm not talking about like I remove some Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends on the circumstances. If everyone's having a conversation over the breakfast table, I might just chill. But I remember one trip this year and I was like, man, I'm, I'm you know, I, I had a blast, but I'm looking forward to coming home and like having my alone time, like out front in the summertime underneath my umbrella and just talking with you, Lord. And then sometimes when you have like weeks and weeks of that, sometimes like having a little trip where you kind of throw things off a little bit and you might do a shorter Bible time, devotion time, that's really nice as well. But what I'm getting at is reach charging yourself. So this might be speaking to someone. Some people might be like, man, I don't like to be alone with my thoughts. I I highly encourage you to be alone with the Lord and just like sit quietly, especially this day and age with doom scrolling and all that stuff. It's like, that's nonsense. Like to be honest with you, praise the Lord. Like, sure. I'll still go on like maybe YouTube, watch a few shorts, but done with Instagram, the algorithm the enemy uses too easily. Like I'm not searching for any of this stuff, but like if I'm like surfing, next thing you know, like these girls will pop up and I'm like, that's not from you, Lord. And I don't need to look at that. That's just a hindrance, to be honest with you. So I'm done with Instagram. I'll post on Instagram, but I'm done with the search feature. There's nothing in it there. So what I really like to do is morning walks. And then on Sundays, if I'm not river surfing or mountain bike riding, I'll also do a walk as well. And I'm talking about like a nice 45 minute hour walk. I'll just talk with the Lord and be still. And that's recharging me. I'll go home, maybe watch. All right, make a long story short, battery ran out of juice. That is what it is. Find that rest, seek that rest. And let me hit you with a verse before, stay with me here. Let me hit you with a verse. This verse (laughs) blew me out of the water. I was like, come on, let's go. Hebrews chapter four, starting in verse eight. And it's talking about Joshua giving them uh, rest. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Verse 11, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. It also says, and then it goes on to say, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. And what I'm talking about is you have to go up to like verse six to talk, you know, it kind of explains that. But it talks about rest in chapter four in Hebrews. Verse 11, the first part of it. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest. Find that rest, my friends. Find that rest. Seek the gifts of the Spirit. Pray for them. I do. I need to pray for them every day. I don't pray for them every day, but I should and I will. But also those gifts and how you can be used by the Lord, what the Lord's placed on your heart. And I pray this has been an encouragement for you. If you watch this thing the whole way through and you're like, what is this guy talking about? I don't even know the Lord. Let's go ahead and get into a prayer for you after this prayer. If you are a believer, I'm just going to pray for you. And then we're going to pray for the salvation of any unbeliever. But for you, the believer that just needs a boost of encouragement, healing over your body, your mind. Isaiah 53, verse 3, I believe. By his wounds, by his transgressions, I'm paraphrasing, by his wounds we are healed. Because Christ went to the cross, rose again from the grave, we are healed. So let's go ahead and pray and let's just be encouraged by this in the name of Jesus. As I'm going to be Lord willing, I receive this encouragement as well. And I believe it by faith. Heavenly Father, thank you for every individual watching this video. Whether it's one, 
whether they're doing dishes while they're doing it, halfway listening to it. I pray in the name of Jesus that if they can hear my voice, they would just believe this by faith and they would continue to pray and seek after the gifts of the Spirit. Also that they would be encouraged to start with the gifts that you've already given them, Lord. There's that man or woman out there, Lord, that has the gift of speaking, that is that encourager, that when people are around them, they just, they have a, a light and that's you, that's you, that's not them, that's you. You're giving them light to bring into that person's life, that smile, that joy, when someone sees your smile. Just, man, every time I'm around you, I'm just encouraged, like, You've blessed me, and my friends have done that to me, so I just want to pray over them, Lord. I want to ask you that you would just pour out your spirit of encouragement. I want to ask you that you pour out your wisdom over them to know where to start, how to start, when to start, and to seek those gifts of the Spirit. I ask you, Father, if anyone is sick from the calm and cold, Lord, to cancer, to skin cancer, to diabetes, to stroke, to heart attack, to any foulness, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, because we make you our refuge, Lord. No disease will come near us. No plague come near our tent, Lord. I ask you for the healing in the name of Jesus Christ over their bodies, Father, according to John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, in the name of Jesus. I ask you for encouragement over them, peace, sound mind. We rebuke and we repent of any anxiousness, depression. Those thoughts are not of you, Father. That's from the devil, and we're not going to entertain fear. We are going to be in your perfect will, Father. That is our prayer over our lives, Lord, that we would be of sound mind, thinking about things that are admirable, right, lovely, and pure. We speak life over our minds, over our hearts, over our bodies, over our families, over our work, over our relationships with you, first and foremost, may they grow in the name of Jesus. May we be blessed and sow, Genesis 26, 12, into our land this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Now for you who has never given your life to the Lord and you want to, by faith, pray this prayer after me. Believe it in your heart. But before we do pray this, the biggest thing is repenting from your sin so if you're in sin right now, you stop, you do a full 180, you give everything to the Lord and say, God, things are kind of messy right now. I'm addicted to this. I'm in the middle of adultery. Confess that sin before the Lord first and foremost, repent of it and turn from it and do it no more. If you're in adultery, confess it before your wife, your husband. If you're in addiction, talk to someone about it have accountability and help to get you through this, but give it all to the Lord. You don't have to have it perfect and then in the adulterous relationship and then come to the Lord. No, no. Come to him now and he'll get you through it. He'll give your spouse supernatural ability to forgive you. And I pray that your marriage is more blessed and restored than it ever has been before in the name of Jesus Christ. So pray this prayer after me. Mean it in your heart. Believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose again from the grave on the third day, and that he can forgive your sins. But give it all to him and then plug in, plug in to a great Bible-believing church that preaches the word of God. Meet friends. Look on Facebook for a mountain biking Christian group, river surfing Christian group, pickleball Christian group. But definitely do life together. It makes it a lot easier than doing it alone. So let's pray this. Mean it in your heart. Receive the Lord's forgiveness, and you shall be saved and have eternal life. Father, thank you for this individual, and I ask you, Lord, that they would mean it in their heart as we pray together. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross to take my sin upon you. I repent of my sin. I turn from my sin, and for what you did on the cross... You have now washed me clean, forgiving my sin. As I repent and turn from this sin, I no longer do what displeases your heart. I believe you are God. I believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah. I believe you rose again on the third day. And I put my heart and trust in you now. Go with me now. 
Put a hedge of protection around me and let me sow deep soil into your kingdom. I pray that I would sow a hundredfold. Protect me from the enemy now. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that you would sow a hundredfold. I pray a hedge of protection around you. I pray if those hard conversations of addiction, drugs, alcohol, pornography, adultery, whatever it is, those hard conversations, because I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Those are going to be tough conversations, but the Lord is with you and he'll get you through that. That addiction, I was addicted to chewing tobacco and I was freed in one night, freed, cold turkey in one night. So can you. So I thank you for coming. I thank you for watching. God bless you and may his hand and face shine upon you. Until next video, my name is Chris. Check out my river surfing videos. I will see you on the next one. God bless you and your family. Hedge of protection around you. Until next time, bye-bye.